Hi guys, Olive here. Today I would like to answer some of the questions that you guys asked me when I asked you for questions for a Q&A session. The first question is from Brie Hill, who has an amazing booktube channel. You should absolutely be watching her. She asked, you're at your favorite restaurant. What are you ordering? Eating out is sometimes difficult for me because I have a severe tomato intolerance. I cannot eat anything with tomatoes in it. And I'm also semi-vegetarian. I only eat poultry and fish, not red meat or pork. So sometimes it is difficult to go to restaurants with those limitations. But my favorite restaurant, which is a local chain around Pittsburgh where I live, has a turkey burger, which is amazing. In fact, any restaurant we go to, if they have a good turkey burger, then I'm a happy girl. Typically, I like them with avocados on them. She also asked what book is currently on your nightstand. When anyone ever asks me what I'm reading, the answer is always plural. This weekend, I need to finish up Uprooted because it's due back at the library, so whoops. Then I'm also still reading A Gentleman in Moscow, and I just started The Empress of Art. Veronica White asks, what was your favorite book as a child or first chapter book? Lame, simple question, but I like to hear people's picks. That's not a lame question. I read a lot as a kid, was read too a lot as a kid. My mom was a teacher, so I did a lot of reading. I can't remember exactly. I read a lot of Beatrix Potter. I read a lot of those little golden books. I remember those being really big in our household. The biggest influence in my reading life was definitely the Boxcar Children series, those I absolutely flew through. I remember reading a lot of the Babysitter's Club. I remember being scared shitless by Goosebumps. All those big series I definitely got into. Stephanie from That's What She Read asked, who's your celebrity crush? And what was 17 year old Olive reading? These ironically fit really well together and I will explain to you why. I don't know if I have any like current celebrity crushes, but when I was in my teenage years, I had really weird, very specific crushes. I was insistent that Ryan Stiles, the comedian from Whose Line Is Anyway, was going to be my first husband, which I guess I'll have to settle for him being my second husband now. Also, I was obsessed with the TV show CSI and specifically the lab tech, Greg. I forget that actor's name, but I had the biggest, biggest crush on him. Erica, formerly of Erica Rayable and now of Erica's Epilogues, <laughs> asked on Instagram, my question is, how do your eyebrows always look so freaking amazing? I don't know if she actually intended for me to answer this, but I'm answering it anyway. Step one, have naturally bushy eyebrows that were not fun to have in the 2000s. I plucked these things religiously within an inch of their life <laughs> for my entire junior high school and high school experience. So I let mine grow back in, and I'm also getting them threaded about every four to six weeks, which is just they take two strings and kind of remove excess hair. It's less irritating to the skin than waxing is, and you can shape them better. I won't pretend that it's not painful, because it is, but it is less painful than waxing. So I get them threaded every so often, and then I fill them in with this stuff. This is a brow powder duo by Anastasia of Beverly Hills in medium brown. I don't use much of it. I don't need much of it. I have a lot of eyebrow. Those are my eyebrow secrets. Really, it's just about having like naturally bushy eyebrows, which happens to be in style right now. I am sure it will go out of style at a certain point, but for right now, I'm reveling in it. Secundra Beasley asked, yes or no regarding sports fan love, Steelers, Pirates, Penguins. She obviously knows I live in Pittsburgh. <laughs> I'm not a big sports fan in general. I've never really followed teams that closely. That being said, since moving to Pittsburgh, I've become a big Pirates fan. I really enjoy going to the games. I like the players. We have the most beautiful baseball stadium in the entire country, do not argue. There is not a bad seat in the house. You can see the entire skyline. It's just the most beautiful stadium. I love spending time there. So I love going to games. I have a ton of fun every time we go. I love watching the game. I love the food. I love the beer. I love the whole experience. When it comes to the Steelers and Penguins, I really don't care. So it's less of a yes or no. It's more of, I like the Pirates and for everything else, I am apathetic. Michaela, who is a Twitter friend of mine, asked, what is the most embarrassing book you own or one others would be surprised you own? I'm really not embarrassed of any books that I own. I just showed off pretty much all of them on my bookshelf tour. There's really nothing I left off. I recently picked this up, Personal Finance in Your 20s and 30s, because I was interested to see if there was anything in here that I didn't already know, which most of it I do, 
but I am starting to think more about investments and retirement because that's the kind of person I am. So I don't know, you'll have to answer the question if you find this surprising, Michaela. Ruby Loves Rocket says, I always enjoy watching Q&A videos, but I'm awful at coming up with cues to get aid, which I am too. My mom teases me that I have an appalling lack of curiosity, but here are some random ones. Favorite alcoholic drink, lemon drop martini. Favorite non-alcoholic drink, that's horrible. I love tea and coffee. It depends on the morning. Most of the time, coffee. Preferably the toasted almond flavor from Dunkin'. Favorite season, fall slash autumn, just like everybody else. Favorite holiday, Thanksgiving. I love to cook. Top five books you own that have your favorite covers. Just one second. I really love all of these. Sleepwalking by Meg Walitzer. An Uncommon Education by Elizabeth Purser. The Czar of Love and Techno by Anthony Mara. No One Is Here Except All of Us by Ramona Acebel, mainly because I'm obsessed with birch trees. This one is a recent acquisition. This is Fireflies, Honey, and Silk by Gilbert Waldbauer. I tend to like my covers simplistic, clean, but very beautiful and classy. What book would you love to see adapted into a TV show slash film? Probably The Night Circus. I know they were talking about that. I think it was optioned, but I haven't heard anything about it since then. So I'm guessing it's not happening. What book do you hope never gets adapted? Uprooted. I know that Ellen DeGeneres had optioned it and I had heard that it was tentatively going into production. I really hope that it doesn't come to fruition. Everything about it makes me nervous. And so I hope it doesn't happen. Victoria from A Hermit's Progress asks, as a responsible adult of legal drinking age, we've seen you enjoy the odd tipple on your channel. I'd say... What is your beverage of choice for a quiet night in? While my favorite cocktail is a lemon drop martini, I tend to enjoy those when I go out. I really don't know how to make one well for myself, but if it's just a quiet night in, then it's probably just a beer. But that's if I am going to be having an alcoholic beverage. If not, then I'll probably just make myself a pot of tea. Victoria also asked, what are some of your non-bookish hobbies and how do they balance with your reading, booktubing, and busy work slash study life? I also got this question from Dee Dee of Brown Girl Reading, who asked, what are some of your other hobbies? I'm not a big movie person, but I do enjoy watching TV. I'm a big fan of anything involving Gordon Ramsay. So I just finished watching MasterChef when that concluded. Now Hell's Kitchen is premiering, so I'll be following along with that. My husband and I are getting ready to finish up Stranger Things on Netflix, which we've been meaning to watch forever. I also really like cooking, less so baking, mainly because I don't like sweets, so there's really no point in baking them. It's also been a challenge over the past few years, I don't even remember how long it's been since I've had this tomato intolerance, to try to make certain recipes tomato-free so that I can enjoy them. I also really enjoy video games. My husband is a really big gamer. I can't really play first person shooters. They make me kind of motion sick. It messes with my mind. Um, but if I can play it in the third person like Skyrim or World of Warcraft, I do that. I also like to watch my husband play first person shooters, especially if they have a strong story element. We really like the Fallout series, we really like Bioshock. Other than those, I really enjoy traveling. I can't wait to do more of it when I have more time and money to do so. I'm also starting to practice my audiobook narration, which is something that I try to get in a little bit of practice every single day. Voice acting has always been a huge interest of mine. So I am trying to keep up with it, trying to improve my skills. I'm hoping to take a class or two on voice acting specifically so that I can get better at it and maybe turn it into a side job. It's a reading thing asked, what is your favorite slash least favorite part about having a YouTube channel? This is a big question, but I think my favorite part of having this YouTube channel is connecting with people of similar interests and being able to have people to talk to. It is very hard as an adult to make friends who have the same interests as you, especially if the interests that they will share with you is reading, which is mainly a solitary activity you do at home. And the type of people who like to do it are introverts who would prefer to be home. So it's very hard to meet other readers in the real world. It's so wonderful to have this community. I know that when I get home from work, I can hop on Twitter and see what people are reading and talking about and hop in the conversation or start a conversation myself. This community has been really supportive. It has absolutely added something to my life. So that's definitely my favorite part. My least favorite part of having this channel is probably the pressure element of it. There is a pressure, even if it's one that you put on yourself, to be reading a certain amount, be posting a certain amount, be watching other people's videos, keeping up with them, commenting on their videos. 
there is a lot of work that goes into this channel and sometimes it absolutely does feel like a job. It's a job I love, it's a job that I want to do, it is something that I happily commit my time to, but it is a serious time commitment. I don't like the feeling of falling behind, I don't like the feeling of if I have so much else going on in my life that I'm not reading as much, that I'm letting somebody down in some way. That's not a fun feeling, I never want to feel that. And while viewers may never be the people putting the pressure on me, it is still something that I do feel. So that's something that I deal with. She also asked, what are you currently reading, which I already talked about, and what other interests do you have besides Russian history and reading books? I did talk a little bit about my other hobbies. My other interests, I could talk to you all day about those. This is why I read so much nonfiction, is that my interests pretty much run the gamut. I'm interested in science, psychology, sociology, sexuality, nature, ecology, politics, history, economics, business. I'm interested in everything. Jeremy, hi Jeremy, asks, do you take notes while reading for book reviews? If so, how detailed? I do to a certain extent. After I finish a book, I try to write down some of the feelings I had about it, especially since I do those month end wrap ups instead of individual book reviews. I don't do very many individual book reviews. So sometimes it is hard to remember how I felt about a book if I finish it at the beginning of the month and then don't talk about it until the end of the month. So I write down some general notes just about how the book made me feel. And then those notes tend to help me remember everything I wanted to say. One from just one reader asked, have you read any Latin American literature? Not much, unfortunately. I read Like Water for Chocolates when we were in Mexico earlier this year, which I really, really loved. I would love to read more from that region in general. What is the book that has grossed you out the most? If you mean like literally grossed out, like something grotesque, I can't really answer that because I don't really read books like that. I tend to stay away from things that are gross or scary. But if we're just talking about hated and the subject matter was atrocious, then the Yonalosi Riding Camp for Girls. Ugh. Juan also asked, what is the most terrifying book you can think of? I personally stay away from horror, like I said, but my husband does not. There's this one book, I think it's called The Terror. It's about this like expedition gone wrong and it's based off of a true story. I want him to read that and tell me about it because I'm interested, but I would pee my pants if I read that myself. Kay asks, besides Russia, what other countries or regions, literature and culture are you interested in? Again, pretty much everything. <laughs> I am not exaggerating. I want to learn more about everywhere in the world. There's not really an area that doesn't interest me. I think being a reader means that you want to learn more about the world. At least that's what it means for me. Now we're going to get into the Russian specific questions. <laughs> Sasha says, from a Russian viewer here, Здравствуйте. how did you develop your interest in Russia and would you ever go there to travel? Okay, so here's the story that I've been meaning to tell on this channel for however long I've had it. When I was a child, I had a very close friend. She had a Russian stepmother. I heard her stepmother and her stepbrother speaking in Russian. And I remember being absolutely flabbergasted by how beautiful it sounded. I wanted them to teach me Russian. I wanted to learn everything there was to learn about Russia. I was not able to take any Russian language courses as a child because number one, I don't think there were very many offered in my area. And number two, I was raised by a single mom who worked full time and the class that I was interested in taking, she wasn't able to get me there because of her work schedule. But from that time in my life, I knew that I was interested in language and specifically in Russian language. Fast forward many years later, when I am sitting down at my college that I've already chosen picking out my courses for my freshman year. My college required that you take a few years of language courses. I had already been taking Spanish in high school and I thought I was going to move on to take Spanish in college. At this point, I knew nothing about Russian history and didn't speak a word of Russian. But lo and behold, on the course offerings, Russian 101. Here finally was my opportunity to learn some Russian. So that was my first ever college course. Literally the first course I ever walked into in college was a Russian language course. 9 a.m. on a Monday morning. Language was my gateway into learning more about the people, more about the history, more about the culture, 
And as my college experience went on, I took more and more courses focused in Russian politics, Russian history, Russian culture, including keeping up with my Russian language courses, which I took every single semester. I studied abroad in the summer between my junior and senior year of college in St. Petersburg. I studied intensive Russian language while I was there. There's a question a little bit later on that asks more about my time spent in Russia, so I'm gonna save some of this detail for that question. Jay Garcia asked, how did you develop your love for Russia? Which I did just speak about. Have you been to Russia? Yes, I have, and I will speak more about that in just a moment. Favorite book of all time? This is always an extremely hard question for a reader, but I will say it is a three-way tie between The Czar of Love and Techno, Rules of Civility by Amor Tolls, and The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Nachos or tacos? Tacos. Elizabeth Spooky House of Books asks, out of all the books you have on and about Russia, which is your all-time favorite author and or book and why? Out of all the books set in Russia, my top two are The Czar of Love and Techno and City of Thieves by David Benioff. Both of them are really well written, very compelling, very entertaining stories, very heartfelt. Both of them are believable as being set in Russia. I highly recommend both of them. Isania asked, what are your favorite Russian related books, fiction and nonfiction? The fiction books I just spoke about and the nonfiction would be all of Robert K. Massey's books, which I did an author spotlight about. I will link that down below if you wanna see it. I know that you spent some time in Russia. What was your experience as an American living there like? What do you miss the most about it? What stereotypes about Russia do you think are completely wrong? Is there anyone in your family or friends who's interested in this country? When it comes to family and friends who are interested in Russia, my family doesn't really have an interest in Russia. We're not of Russian descent, which is a question that I get asked in my real life a lot. And then when it comes to friends who are interested in Russia, I have a lot of friends who I met in Russia on my study abroad trip that I still talk to, so. I do have some friends who are also interested in Russia. So my time spent in Russia was unfortunately limited to the summer in between my junior and senior years. Like I said, I had an amazing time studying there, sightseeing as much as I possibly could. I went to basically every museum I could, sometimes twice or three times. Those two months I spent in Russia were the most amazing two months of my life. I missed everyone a lot and there was definitely some culture shock. But I look back on that time in my life so fondly now, I do not regret going for a single moment. I miss everything about it. I loved being in Russia. I wish I would have had more time. I wish I would have been able to see more of it. But I'm so incredibly grateful that I got that experience. I miss hearing Russian on the streets. I miss the blimi. I miss our little produkti around the corner where we would buy cider. I miss our crappy little dorm room. I miss everything about it. The stereotypes that I think are incorrect is that like Russians don't smile. That's a bunch of bull. You have to earn a Russian smile, which feels more honest. It's just the way the Russians are. It doesn't mean they're cold or callous. It's just how they are. Lauren from Burnt Fiction asks, I'm a dessert and coffee kind of person. What are some of your favorite Russian classic books and desserts they would be paired with? I have not read a lot of Russian classic literature. That is something I want to do more of. My background is mainly in Russian politics, history, and culture. Um, that being said, if I'm reading a classic Russian book, I would want some of those Russian cookies. Morningstar asks, since others are asking about your interest in Russian history, I'm curious to know what other historical time periods interest you. I'm very interested in World War I, less so World War II. I like to read books set in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. I like to read nonfiction from that time period as well. Also, do you have a specific Russian historical era you like to read slash study about the most? Probably the end of the 19th century, early 20th century with Nicholas II's reign, Lenin's rising, and the Russian Revolution. Who is your favorite Russian author? I don't have one yet, but I'm hoping to develop one in the next couple years. And lastly, Michael from Knowledge Loss asks, when are you doing more videos about Russia and what is your experience with Russian literature? I don't have much of an experience with Russian literature yet. I never took any literature courses at all in college, let alone Russian literature. And most of the Russian literature that I read was either tied to a history course or I read it in Russian attempting to poorly translate it into English. So I'm hoping that I will have more of an experience with Russian literature as time goes on. That is definitely a top priority for me for next year's reading. When it comes to doing more videos about Russia, I don't have that much planned for the remainder of this year, 
besides a video that Michael himself requested of me pronouncing Russian author names to help other people learn how to pronounce them, which I'm hoping to do here in the next couple of weeks. And then I have some plans for next year. I have a whole series planned, which I am still thinking out all the details for, but I will announce that at the end of this year and I'm very excited about it. So those were all the questions. I hope I gave enough information and in my answers. If I didn't, you can feel free to ask a follow-up question or if you didn't get a chance to ask the question that you wanted to ask, you can put it in the comment section below. If you'd like to get in contact with me by any other means in the comment section, all the links to my social media profiles I've put in the description box below. Thank you so much for all of your questions. I really enjoyed doing this. I hope you're having a great weekend and I will see you in the next video. Bye.